Pray for the news. 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 In the wild, where Vikings once lived, roams one of the many Nordic creatures. Big as an ox, wild and terrible, armed with huge antlers to protect himself. In his beard he collects water, which is heated up the moment he runs, so that when a hunter or dog threatens him, he scalds the intruders, teaching them a lesson for life. About the same time Anglicus was daydreaming about the moose, Vikings were swinging their swords and spreading their genes throughout Europe, fighting, drinking, stealing, and raping, and creating a bit of a reputation for themselves. Part of the Scandinavian reputation is the fact that Scandinavian women are amongst the most beautiful in the world. And there's more about vodka and Volvo. And hold on. Scandinavians kill moose by the thousands. If you ever visit one of the Scandinavian countries, you're certain to hear about the moose. They even say that Swedish moose dance. And some people go so far as to make necklaces from moose sh <laughs> droppings. But to tell you the truth, he's danger to traffic and a disaster to the forest industry. He's big and impressive, the biggest of all wildlife in Europe. Each year, 200,000 moose are killed in Scandinavia, usually too many for Scandinavians to consume before the next hunting season. So Scandinavians eat moose every week, every month, all year round. 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 You get the picture. The moose is a clever animal and knows his enemies. The two-legged ones are the worst of all. But besides that, Scandinavians love the moose, even though they kill them in large numbers every year. They enjoy studying him in the wild and making plans for next hunting season. There's kind of a long and ongoing relationship between moose and man in the northern parts of Europe. <laughs> Moose hunting is probably as important to the Scandinavians as wild boar hunting to the Germans and fox hunting to the English. For the French, it's black truffles. A big bull moose could pose a real challenge to our forefathers with no rifles around. But the pits that were used to trap moose were several meters deep and impossible for a moose to climb.
Moose were in Scandinavia at the end of the last ice age, about 10,000 years ago. At that time, he was hunted by nomadic hunters, dressed in skins and dependent upon moose and reindeer for their survival. Living on the tundra, they occasionally encountered the muskox. Without exaggeration, one could call these gentlemen the first moose hunters of Scandinavia, and they never saw a moose for anything other than food or clothing. He hunted the moose together with his dog, a loyal and valuable companion who's still hanging around. There's a saying that if a man is really intelligent, there's almost nothing a good dog can't teach him. But a foolish man can't learn anything from a smart dog, while a dumb dog can occasionally learn something from a smart man. It's the dog's business to know his business. Remember that. Stone Age man was dependent upon nature, wildlife, and the moose. He made rock carvings to honor successful hunting trips. The moose was the most valuable animal and was celebrated at special ceremonies. The hunter believed that all wildlife was protected by spirits which threatened the hunter. He had prayed to the gods as much as to the moose. The shaman delivered messages from the people to the gods and vice versa. So they prayed to the moose, asking him to stay the coming winter so that the people could survive. Often the moose was the difference between starvation and survival. If you look at today's moose hunter in Sweden, You'll find all kinds of professions, a farmer, a chief executive, a lawyer, a surgeon. But here, these roles mean nothing. In the world of moose hunting, it's knowledge about game, rifles, and butchering that counts. The chief exec might find himself at the bottom of the hierarchy if he's not a hunter. To talk like one, dress like one, butcher a moose and smell like you've never heard about things like soap and water. Being able to take a piss wherever you want, blow your nose when you want. There's some primal satisfaction in this, at least to men. When you think about it, it's a wonder women could love the best of them, let alone the rest of them. go hunting. At least 5% of the males in Scandinavia, that is. But do they have to? Isn't it just some old tradition from an age gone by when our forefathers used stone clubs and wore clothing made of moose skin? Today's hunting is criticized and not very popular in Central Europe. English foxhounds may soon see retirement, and the Dutch hunters are now using the highways as boundaries during their Sunday morning hunts. If the European Union decided to place restrictions on Scandinavian moose hunting, there would be an uproar like never before. <coughs> the English are in danger of being forbidden to use foxhounds for fox hunting. It's interesting to know that Hitler forbade hunting dogs because he saw the use of dogs as a cruelty against animals. The list of inconsistencies is endless. As far as cruelty is concerned, one need look no farther than the life of a battery hen or factory farm pig and cows 
where death must come as a reprieve. And how is it that no one worries about animals like fish, who for sport and fun are yanked to their deaths on hooks, tearing through their faces? Just as a comparison. Because we eat meat, perhaps today more than ever from wild game than from domesticated animals, the problem is that meat from wild game is not enough for everyone to use. Well, maybe except for the moose in Scandinavia, that is. To hunt or not to hunt? Do we have the right to decide upon whether an animal should live or die? To shoot or not? To live or let die? From a biological point of view, the answer would undoubtedly be yes. We have that right, because that is what biologists, ethnologists, and farmers would describe as the law of nature, to eat or be eaten. Herbivores are competing with other herbivores for the best food. In turn, they are eaten by carnivores. But in the same philosophical discussion are the rights of man in nature, as the top of the food chain. We try to answer the questions like, do we have the right to kill a moose? The answer is not that obvious. Often, right and wrong are a matter of personal opinions and where we live. Today, there's an increasing polarization between the intolerant and even aggressive urban society and a traditional rural society less skilled in communication, a division that countries like Spain, Ireland, France, and the Scandinavian nations have eluded because of a much closer bond between countryside and town. Unfortunately, too many people only know of wildlife through television, stuffed animals, and art. A common opinion is that if hunting is to be outlawed on the grounds of cruelty, fishing should be next on the agenda. There is, of course, the political aspect as well. One has to remember that there are maybe more votes in fishermen than there are in hunters. There are times when things go terribly wrong because of inexperienced hunters who cause animals to suffer. Logically, the second-rate hunter should be outlawed, not hunting as a sport. 1973 Nobel Prize winner Conrad Lorenz compared the characteristics of hunting with photography. According to Lorenz, both hunting and photography are an expression of the basic hunting instinct. A person who shares both these interests soon notices the similarities. The essential difference lies in the end result. The hunter strives for a roast on the table. The photographer, an attractive picture. Regardless whether the weapon is a camera or a gun, the experience can be just as exciting. behavioral scientist Desmond Morris states that sociologically, we have not progressed from the collecting and hunting stage. Sports activities are, for example, modified forms of hunting behavior. From a biological point of view, today's soccer player resembles a member of a camouflage-dressed hunting party. Morris believes that when hunting became less of a necessity in England during the first half of the 19th century, a need was created to replace hunting with something else. According to Morris, soccer includes many of the behavioral patterns that can be found in hunting. There is the struggle, the competitiveness, and the goal to be defeated or won, and the goal to attain or win. Instead of outwitting the deer, it's the opposing team that must be outwitted, with a goal being the decisive blow.
Goose hunting in Scandinavia is an industry. During the last 40 years, the idea has been to increase moose population by shooting a lot of young animals, thereby increasing the average age and getting a more productive population. But things aren't always that easy. In the beginning of the 80s, Swedish hunters shot close to 200,000 moose, not counting those shot in Norway and Finland. It was almost too much to handle. Yet even today, the moose is considered a problem in wintertime when feeding on young pines and causing economical losses to the landowner. Imagine driving along a forest road early one Sunday morning, peace and solitude, and suddenly she is standing there just looking at you. But if you're unlucky, things happen much faster, and eventually you hit a wall of live meat. That's often the case when you hit a moose with your car. Sometimes you die once, but mostly metal injuries and flesh wounds. The coming decade will mean changes for Scandinavian hunters. Nordic authorities aim to increase the wolf population. Wolves eat moose and deer. In fact, quite a few. So pray for the moose. This, of course, means less moose for man to kill. But on the other hand, more wolves for us to study. One hundred years ago, the wolf was nearly extinct, largely due to hunting. Wolves and domestic animals just don't mix very well. There seems to be a long-running competition between man and predators whether it's farmers in Africa or farmers in Scandinavia. The struggle is the same. The land ain't big enough for the two of them. easier for man and, and tame the moose like we once did with the aruks. Stall them and milk them. Sell moose cheese and some refreshing moose milkshakes to the tourist. The fact is Siberia has a long thriving tradition of moose farming. Even though hunters often have somewhat of a macho attitude, the actual killing of a moose does cause a certain inner conflicts to arise, mainly because killing is not an everyday activity, even for the hunter. Usually the hunter will experience a heavy and raised pulse. And some even say a kick of adrenaline at the actual moment of the killing. Ever hear someone say, gazing out the window at the forest beyond, 
Yeah, I'm shit in that forest. Meaning he knows his way around the wilderness. Today, most hunters get out in the swamps and the unpaved forest once or twice during the entire hunting season. Mainly because he's getting lazy and busy putting more fat around his waist, like many others. Fortunately, his hunting equipment is getting better and better all the time. He can kill a moose at 300 meters without a problem, as long as the bullet hits the moose in the right spot. For many hunters, the trophy is what it's all about. A huge set of antlers on the wall and a story to go with it, that's perfection. Just like our forefathers, when the hunter that kills the biggest animal is the best hunter. The difference today is, it's just the size of the antlers and not how much meat that counts. There's an old saying that the best part of hunting is the thinking about going and the talking about it after you get back. You just have to get the actual middle as a basis of conversation and to put some meat in the pot. Everybody should be allowed to brag some about what he did good that day and, and even cover up the shame of what he did wrong, even if there's a fellow moose listening to the bragging. <laughs> Only a few hundred years ago, hunting was a necessity for survival. It was a part of daily life and close to the heart. But things have changed. We still enjoy spending time in the forest, listening to the silence, and thrill coming close to wildlife. Both hunters and children learn more with their eyes wide open and their mouths shut. At least when it comes to mooseography. It's time to hunt moose. It's time for men to be out on their own, to do what men have to do. Certain towns appear as they were decimated by the plague. Some police stations even close. The local priest prays for the moose and urges the men to behave like gentlemen during the hunt and to kill the right way. Conversation for school children, housewives, and unemployed centers around moose hunting. Has anyone made a kill yet? How many points was the rack? Who got lost? What time's lunch? And all this happens the first week of the yearly moose season. Killing moose by the thousands is what men do in September and October. Because it's mostly men who do the hunting. Only about 5% are women, but more are coming every year. It seems like the moose is good for Scandinavia. An enormous animal, easy to spot, and not very difficult to kill. 
Moose hunting is accepted business in Scandinavia. He's a vegetarian, and so he's harmless. He doesn't seem as smart as a wolf or a bear, and he's big, a couple of hundred kilos of delicious meat, 10 times that of a deer, which are also harvested by the hundreds of thousands every year. Maybe the moose isn't cute like the seal, but he sure is the most impressive animal in Europe. Ask anyone in Scandinavia, they'll tell you. As to whether a Swede, Norwegian, or Finn has the right to kill about 200,000 moose every year, their answer is clear every fall. You just don't argue about holy things like that. There are many things Scandinavians are proud of, and moose hunting is one of them. It's a man's world, one of the last ones. And without the moose, Quite a few Scandinavians would have died of starvation in the past. And things would have been a lot worse for Scandinavian men, even today, if they couldn't go hunting every fall and spend a week or two in the forest. So, if for any reason you happen to pray for the moose in the future, it will be seen as a tribute to the moose and its 10,000 year support to mankind. <laughs>